Hello, I'm Tony Dieterlisi, author, illustrator, and huge Star Wars nerd. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, and like millions of other fans, I grew up watching the films, playing with the toys, pretending I was Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Star Wars had just a tremendous impact on my imagination when I first saw the film back in 1977. So you can imagine how unbelievably insane it was when Lucasfilm called me to ask me to adapt the original films, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi into a storybook format called The Adventures of Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. This was a dream come true project for me. Furthermore, I'd be working with the illustrations by a man named Ralph McQuarrie. Ralph was an illustrator who worked with George Lucas early on in the development of the Star Wars films. Um, though there were other artists working with George at the time, designing the creatures and the costumes and the ships, Ralph was able to synthesize all those elements into these beautiful paintings that gave us glimpses of what Star Wars would look like before any cameras were, were reeling and recording the film. So um, it is with great pleasure today that I read for you the first part of this book, which covers A New Hope in The Adventures of Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. Um, now, as we all know, in Star Wars, we don't say once upon a time, we say a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. This is a story of good versus evil, of light dispelling darkness. This is a story of hope. It begins on the distant planet of Tatooine with a farm boy named Luke Skywalker. Luke never knew his parents. He lived with his aunt and uncle on a farm that harvested precious water from the dry desert air. Though busy with his many chores on the moisture farm, Luke was bored. He dreamed of exploring the twinkling frontier of space beyond the scorching twin suns of his Dust Bowl home. Luke Skywalker yearned for adventure. And there's Luke with his land speeder. Boom! Far from the moisture farm, an escape pod fell from the sky and crashed on the dunes. Out of the smoldering pod emerged two dinged up droids. They had come to Tatooine in search of a Jedi Knight, a noble guardian of peace and justice for whom they brought a secret message. The smaller droid, R2-D2, communicated using electronic chirps, but his companion, C-3PO, spoke eloquently. We're doomed, he cried after surveying their surroundings. And there's C-3PO and R2-D2, a very early image of them, I might add. The droids wandered through the desert until the dusky twin sun set. With nightfall, they encountered a band of Jawas, grubby scavengers who roamed the desert, searching for precious junk to sell and trade. Utani! The Jawas squealed with delight as they loaded the captured droids onto their giant sand crawler. The Jawas sold R2 and 3PO to Luke's uncle as farmhands. While Luke cleaned the dusty droids, C-3PO recounted how they had served the rebellion and narrowly escaped an attack by the evil Galactic Empire. It was known throughout the galaxy that the fearsome Darth Vader was the face of the Empire. Under orders from his master, Emperor Palpatine, Vader had hunted down and exterminated all members of the ancient order of Jedi Knights except for one. From R2's eye came a flickering image of a girl. Though adorned in the elegant robes of a princess, her face was one of worry. Her recorded voice trembled. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Luke knew old Ben Kenobi, the hermit who lived out beyond the Dune Sea. Could he be the Obi-Wan that the princess referred to? Could Ben have the power to rescue a princess and defeat the Empire? Luke, who longed for adventure, couldn't resist the chance to find out, even though the journey might be dangerous. Little did he know that Imperial stormtroopers had landed on Tatooine. 
Darth Vader had discovered the missing escape pod from the princess's starship and ordered a squadron to track down the droids and destroy them. And here he is, the fearsome Darth Vader, wielding his lightsaber. Early in the morning, Luke and the droids set out to find Obi-Wan. As they neared his home, a gang of Tusken Raiders ambushed Luke. The fierce nomads were about to finish him when an eerie howl echoed throughout the canyon walls. The raiders mounted their mighty banthas and fled. A shabby robed man crept out of a rocky ravine and helped Luke to his feet. Luke recognized his savior as Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi, the man the droids had been searching for. There's the Tusken Raiders. Back in his hovel, Obi-Wan revealed that he had once been a Jedi Knight and that Luke's father had been one too. The old Jedi viewed R2's secret message from the Princess Leia. She had stolen the plans for Darth Vader's new secret weapon and hidden them inside the small droid. Plans that would be invaluable to the Rebel Alliance, which was intent on thwarting the evil deeds of the Empire. Obi-Wan stroked his beard, then turned to Luke. You must learn the ways of the Force. Obi-Wan explained that it was the Force that gave a Jedi his power. It was an energy created by all living things. Like good and evil, there were two sides to the Force. Vader had succumbed to the dark side when he destroyed Luke's father, Anakin, the most gifted of all Jedi Knights. Confessing that he was too old to rescue the princess, Obi-Wan placed Anakin's battered lightsaber in the farm boy's hand and asked for help. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father, said Luke. With the droids in tow, they left for the nearest spaceport in hopes of finding a ship to rescue the captive princess. And where did they go? Moss Eisley Spaceport, Obi-Wan announced as they neared the dingy outpost. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Turning down a crowded street, they were stopped by a squad of Imperial stormtroopers whose white armor gleamed in the midday suns. Luke tried to conceal the worry on his face while a trooper questioned him about R2-D2 and C-3PO. Obi-Wan dismissed the trooper with a wave of his hand. These aren't the droids you're looking for. The trooper nodded and allowed them entrance into Mos Eisley. Luke couldn't believe they had gotten past that checkpoint. The Force can have a strong influence on the weak-minded, Obi-Wan advised, and led Luke into a noisy cantina bustling with local scoundrels and off-world troublemakers. So here we go. There's the checkpoint. And here we go into the cantina. Inside the cantina, they met Han Solo, captain of the pirate ship, the Millennium Falcon, and his shaggy first mate, Chewbacca. Han agreed to help rescue Princess Leia, but he demanded payment. Luke didn't have money, and he didn't like Captain Solo, but Obi-Wan promised Han a reward once they completed their rescue mission. You guys got yourself a ship, Han replied with a crooked grin. We leave as soon as you're ready, Docking Bay 94. While everyone prepared for takeoff, Han met with met with the grotesque gangster Jabba the Hutt. Though Han was in debt to Jabba for a large sum of money, he bargained for more time to pay him back. Don't disappoint me, Jabba warned as he slithered away. A snitch informed the stormtroopers that R2-D2 and C-3PO were indeed the droids they had been searching for. The troopers marched into Docking Bay 94 as everyone scrambled on board the Falcon. And here it is, Docking Bay 94 in the Millennium Falcon with Luke and company, the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Under a rain of blaster fire, the Millennium Falcon's engines roared as it rocketed out of Mos Eisley and away from Tatooine. Once spaceborne Obi-Wan began to teach Luke about the Force, stretch out with your feelings, he instructed as Luke practiced with his father's lightsaber. 
Before long, they came upon the Empire's secret weapon, a technological terror called the Death Star. The space station was the size of a moon and had enough firepower to obliterate entire planets. Anyone who opposed the Emperor would be destroyed. Pew, 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 pew. An Imperial TIE fighter blasted the Falcon while the Death Star's tractor beam dragged the pirate ship into its orbit. The Falcon's controls were useless. There was nothing Han could do. And there's the Falcon getting sucked into the tractor beam. Sucked in by the tractor beam, excuse me. The Falcon was forced to land in the main bay of the Death Star. With blasters drawn, a squad of stormtroopers searched the pirate ship. But Luke and his friends were nowhere to be found. Two troopers remained inside the Falcon while the rest exited to report to their captain. Whack! Womp! Boop! 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 The remaining two troopers stepped down from the Falcon's entry ramp, but it was Luke and Han in disguise. With Chewbacca in shackles, the heroes escorted their prisoner to the detention level of the space station where the princess was being held. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan snuck off to deactivate the tractor beam that was preventing the Falcon from escape. And here's the Falcon on, in the docking bay and then Luke and Han in disguise with Chewie. Whoosh! Princess Leia's cell door slid open and a lone stormtrooper stood in the entryway. The trooper removed his helmet. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Come on. Leia took his outstretched hand. But Darth Vader had been alerted to their escape. Pew, 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 pew. Stormtroopers closed in on Luke and his friends as they fled the detention level. Surprising Luke with her aim, the princess took the lead with blaster in hand. The droids directed them through endless corridors and passageways back to the Millennium Falcon. Near the controls of the tractor beam, Vader discovered Obi-Wan. In a grand lightsaber duel to the death, Darth Vader struck down the last Jedi Knight. With the tractor beam deactivated, the Falcon escaped from the Death Star and flew towards planet Yavin, whose lush moon housed the Rebels' hidden base. Despite the success of rescuing Princess Leia, Luke was crestfallen. Obi-Wan was not just a Jedi Knight, he was Luke's teacher and friend. But there was no time for sorrow. Tracking the Falcon, Darth Vader had learned the location of the Rebel base. He ordered the Death Star to orbit Yavin, once in firing range, he would blow up its moon and the Rebel Alliance with it. R2 displayed the Death Star's plans and a weakness was discovered. A direct torpedo hit in the main exhaust port would destroy the space station. But the port was small. The attack would not be easy. All flight troops, man your stations. All flight troops, man your stations. A voice boomed over a loudspeaker in the Rebel's main hangar. Pirates boarded their space fighters. I'm sorry, pilots <laughs> boarded, their, boarded their space fighters, all except for Han, who is a pirate, who was counting his reward. Luke felt betrayed by Han, but there was no time to lose. He hopped aboard an X-Wing fighter and zoomed off to attack the fast-approaching Death Star while Darth Vader's squadron of Imperial TIE fighters prepared to stop them. So here we see... Uh, the Rebels getting ready in, uh, in the Rebel base, and a fantastic illustration from the Death Star's point of view. We even see Darth Vader boarding his TIE fighter, which is pretty cool. A scene that we didn't see in the movie, but still pretty awesome. The TIE fighters chase Luke's X-Wing through narrow trenches, past gun towers, and over the metallic surface of the Death Star. Luke had to hurry to find the exhaust port before it was too late. <laughs> Laser bolts shot at Luke's squadron from every direction. Ships on both sides erupted in fiery explosions. Soon Luke was the only rebel pilot left. Nervous, he raced toward the main exhaust port at full speed with several TIE fighters close behind. In moments, the Death Star would be in firing range of the rebels' hidden base. There would be no one to stop Darth Vader and the Empire if Luke failed. He was alone. One ship against a squadron of Imperial fighters. <laughs> the Imperial fighters blew apart as the Millennium Falcon fired on them from overhead. You're all clear, kid. Han's voice came over Luke's headset. 
Now let's blow this thing and go home. The pirate had not forsaken his friend for money after all. Luke worried he might miss the target. As Obi-Wan had taught him, Luke reached out with his feelings and used the force. He took a deep breath and fired his torpedoes at the main exhaust port of the Death Star. So here we are, some amazing imagery of the dogfight over the Death Star. Pretty iconic one here of TIE Fighter and Luke's X-Wing. The Death Star exploded into countless sparkling pieces. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Han cheered over the headset. Chewbacca roared with joy. The Force will be with you always. Obi-Wan's voice drifted into Luke's thoughts. It was as if the old knight had been with Luke all along, guiding him. The remaining Imperial TIE fighters were destroyed, all but one which slipped away. Arriving back at the rebel base, Luke and his friends were greeted by a cheering crowd. Princess Leia held a ceremony to honor the brave heroes who had risked their lives to stop Darth Vader, especially the farm boy from Tatooine. And here is the Death Star exploding, Darth Vader getting away, and Princess Leia and the ceremony for the heroes. And that is where we'll say goodbye for now. The book does cover um, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but we'll do those next time. In the meantime, I hope you're safe and well, and may the fourth be with you!